morning guys, how we doing this morning? Something that kind of hey, makes it chilly out here. Never mind, it's not in that door. Do this morning is uh I got a leaf blower that I tend to blow up my filters with. My brother's got an air compressor in his pickup, but this works. It gets gets quite a bit of it. Um but no. So I'm gonna kind of blow out my big air filter. Uh, go from there. Frosty, the snowman. So one thing I've been pleasantly pleased with is we put the, one of these blower tubes, I don't know, it's kind of dark this morning, so one of those, they call them Salem. I can't really get it to focus because it's kind of dark, but anyway. No, I haven't blown this off. Usually I'd have to blow this off multiple times a year and I haven't touched it once. I know there's still a little bit of stuff here, just kind of that collect from moisture and condensation. But uh, usually you get a bunch of fluff here and that thing's been keeping it blowed off really nicely. I, I haven't done it just for that reason, just to see what it'll do. I know we've had enough windy days too, but usually, yeah, this still will have a mound of crap, but it's kept it off hit mine and my brother has, he has the power cast on his combine. And as you can see, it's keeping it, I don't know if he's done anything to his, but it's been keeping it pretty clean as well. So I've been happy with that anyway. This is my cab filter. I put this in a lot better location than the last series. The last series was behind that door behind the cab. It always kind of stunk to pull that out. This one's a lot faster. Jeez. Lots of dust. So one thing, and it's kind of important to do every once in a while, I'm not going to tell you the interval I do it in because somebody out there will critique me on that, I'm sure that, I'm sure of it. But uh, no, I'm going to go out, there's some on the head, there's one on the feeder house, um, a loading auger, and there's a small one kind of back here on my passenger side that nobody knows what it runs, but um, it's there. But um, no, uh, I'm not going to show you how I do this by myself because I'll get you down. your tailings auger nobody knew whoa, 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 whoa. I'm gonna attempt to yeah I'll tighten them up still so getting ready to move to the next field sister-in-law is gonna lead us crank cart combine roll the next field so I get asked a lot what this thing is in the corner here And as far as I know, I assume it's a deal. It's got a sharp point on it, if you can see it right there. On both sides, but I assume it's just to break the... I'm not gonna demonstrate it. That'd probably be a bad idea. But uh, I assume it's to, if you ever get trapped in a rollover or whatever, that you could break the glass of the combine. It also has a little hook, a blade to maybe cut cut you out of the seat belt or something. I, I'm just assuming all this, but that's what that is anyway. First time I've really touched it. Action on the customer's face. This is the next.
sieves to make sure you don't want a lot of times frost, heavy frost or um, wet snow will collect on your sieves back there and then it'll plug them up and when that plugs up you just kick corn over the sieves and then you don't collect any corn so uh, I don't know how much longer we'll go on this if it keeps snowing I mean just the fact of making a mess and getting the corn tough and, I don't know, it, I think it's cold enough now that it's like it knocks off the plant coming into the head is what's keeping us alive right now. But yeah, I don't know. Down corn. It's not a lot of fun, I guess, but kind of is the tale of 2019. Well, that's it. We're done for today on this stuff. You can see it's even starting to kind of cake up in there. Before it builds up in your sieves, you don't want to do that. Then you got to take your sieves out and steam them off or whatever if it doesn't get warm enough to dry them out. So uh, we're going to call it what it is and fix stuff, I guess. Well, we're going to give it a try. We'll see if it goes today anyway. But this guy's supposed to show up sometime, but I'm not sure when, so I'll shut off his truck. Now we're gonna head out to the field, I guess. So there's a couple guys working there now. Um, they got the concrete poured that we're supposed to drive over. And uh, they got the the pit augers all the way up. They just gotta put the, the diverter that comes in down because there's two legs there. And so they gotta be able to run it, to have a diverter to either run it to the wet leg or the dry leg is what we're calling them, I guess. And uh, so they still gotta get all that kind of funneled in and the electrician's gotta get it, the motors up top hooked up and then I think it's ready to turn. <sighs> we're hoping to be able to use it sometime, maybe later this week if it dries out. Tonight, we got more chances of snow, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see what it is. But um, yeah, hopefully they can get that done anyway and uh, we can actually start using it. And, so now, um, around here, around our farm, we actually, it didn't accumulate at all, the snow. Uh, it accumulated a little bit where we were at yesterday, so we're heading out to the field now to see, make sure we can go. It's a little frosty, but um, if it ain't sticking to the plants and sticking to our sieves, we should be able to run. So we're gonna head out there now to see what we can do, I guess. I think my brother's already out there, so. Another thing, uh, an issue we've been having just slightly lately I don't know if you've seen in my videos before but we have those grain cart scales through Agra they're Agra Libras they use an iPad the only problem is one is throwing what I would call phantom loads and so I've been talking to a guy from uh, oh, a, a scale company out of Central City <laughs> I'll let you figure out that name but uh, we I think we finally pinpointed it we're gonna get a new um, junction box the reason he was saying is there could be moisture getting in some of those one of those plugs um, he told me to clean it out really good and stuff I just decided to get a new junction box coming so we can get that fixed because in the grand scheme of things I'd rather just have it fresh um, the, the plugs I think are letting in moisture the, in the junction box we have doesn't let the box go clear to the cab and I think we need to start storing them in the cab maybe just so moisture can't build up inside of them. Ordered one of them, so hopefully it comes today sometime. So uh, we'll, we'll put that on. I don't know if it'll be today or not, but because usually our UPS doesn't come till later. But uh, just got a call from the old man and brother that um, that field that we were on still had a little bit of snow on the leaves, so that might be a no-go for a little bit. So we're gonna go check out another field that we have somewhat close. And it's probably still three or four miles away, so this one's kind of out there a little bit, but uh, Luckily, I'm not all the way there so I can turn and go north And see if uh, head up there and meet them up at a potential field that we could go look at From here, so uh, that's what I'm gonna do now Well, it'll probably go eventually. The bad news is on these hilltops, it's it's more down corn. That just slows it down more. It's the only unfortunate thing. Just 
stinks because it takes longer to harvest and it just balls up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bottoms look better, but. These ones got hit pretty good on this hillside. The wind came out of the northwest, that way's the northwest. You can tell which way it just laid it over on these northwest hillsides. I don't know if you can tell, the bottoms get a little bit better down there. Or hopefully they do, but some of this is even lower than I thought, but just get your snouts as low as you can. A little bit of frost on them. So I don't know if that stuff would be off by the time we move the equipment up here or not. So we got started on this field here. It doesn't seem like frost or, or snow is going to be an issue on this one right now. We're picking off the end rows. Uh, we usually plant about 24 rows around on our, our pivots uh, for end rows. Like I said earlier on our gravity fields, on the one end we usually have to deadhead it. So if you want to go back to the other videos on something like that, I don't know, maybe I didn't even talk about that. But anyway, waiting for a cart. My brother's dumping on him now. He's taking the 12 inside rows and I'm taking the 12 outside. But so while I'm waiting, you know, we got all this down corn and what will happen for insurance is um, we do carry a wind endorsement on ours with the hail policy. It's a little bit more, but wind has be become a big factor um, in things. Uh, it was kind of probably originally intended for green snap and stuff like that, but it also covers you through November 1st. Different policies have different dates. I think ours is November 1st. So this stuff is still covered, whether it got knocked down before or after uh, uh, tassel and stuff or whatnot. But um, but what what will happen now is adjusters, insurance adjusters, have to come out here and basically look at the field to kind of get a guesstimate on what kind of losses we've experienced from ears remaining on the ground. And every field's going to be different. Uh, the tough part is is one thing we've been noticing. <laughs> A lot too is it depends on your head too so I think something that might be discussed is the issue we have is the inside rows usually collect a little more it's those outside rows the ears will tend to fall outside the the head a lot easier because they'll lay over the side and the ear retention or, or whatnot will just drop the ears or even the whole stock will even go over the side so it might be a good thing to be communicating as an adjuster or with your adjuster what size of head you have because then they can maybe go out there and say if you have a 12 row head you at least count 12 rows in that field and just see okay is there a worse row and take that into account or are you 8 row or, or 16 row and stuff like that so I don't know it's kind of something we've been noticing anyway me and my brother are just going to switch in rows that way I can keep going he can keep going we can dump on the go then are kind of talking about you know this slowed me down a half a mile an hour or I don't know it, a mile an hour in the field it doesn't seem like a lot you know people are kind of wondering what's the big deal of I'm having to drop the combine speed down from like 4.2 4, 4 to 3 and a half to 3.2 well if you just think to put it in perspective I was kind of doing some numbers and um, if you were to take three and a half divided by four well that's it was like 87 and a half percent so I mean that's roughly 13 percent uh, reduction in, in speed so if you're to do that at a highway speed say you're going 75 down the interstate well it'd be like dropping down to 65 mile an hour so it's gonna take longer time to do this and that's kind of what's going through the back of our heads is how much longer it's gonna drag this whole harvest out we're not driving just three hours somewhere we're you know we're spending a lot of time in these fields so add 13 to 20 percent you know extra time to uh harvest down corn it, it adds up so i mean there's an extra cost to all that as well so just hopefully that kind of puts things into a little bit of perspective for maybe some of you non-farmers out there just 
just dropping half a mile an hour doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're going at slower speeds, it makes it makes quite a bit of difference in the end.